Uh, now, first of all, <laughs> thanks again, brother, for uh, doing this. I, I can't thank you enough. It's been so long since we talked. We kind of lost track of each other, and then it kind of linked back up uh, uh, recently, and I'm glad we did because it's, it's, uh, I'm really excited to hear what you've been up to. And I mean, uh, uh, you know, you start off uh, at Carson and went to the 22nd Ace Off, which all those guys at that unit, including yourself, I've always had a lot of respect for. That, that unit was just awesome. So I'm really excited to hear about kind of the old days because I wasn't in that unit, so I don't know – you know, the ins and outs or any kind of stories about it. So it's cool to hear guys come on and talk about that. But let's begin with, um, you know, just what prompted you to join the military and then uh, kind of go from there, like take me to tech school and then Carson and, and we'll go on from there. All right. Well, I, good to see you again, too. I mean, it's been a long, pretty long time. Yeah. Um, I guess um, what prompted me to get in the military is my dad kind of jokes. Um, I was kind of a lost soul, like, uh, you know, okay-ish in school, but community college, like, just kind of wasn't really for me. Um, <laughs> and one, one day my dad was like, hey, you need to pick a color. <laughs> and what he, meant, what he meant by that was like blue, green, Marines, or, you know, Navy. Yeah. I chose the Air Force because um, I didn't really want to go to combat. Like, I was kind of like, oh, you know what? I'll just go, I'll go to the Air Force for a couple of years and just hang out. And like, <laughs> I was in, uh, I went to tech school and actually. Um, what well, did you get tech P guaranteed coming in or was it like you, you saying, saw them in basic and you're like, oh, I want to do that? Or how was that? Yeah, I was guaranteed financial management service specialist. Right. <laughs> based on my ASVAB scores. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> that must have been pretty high then, I reckon. Uh, yeah, it, it, well, I think I got lucky to be honest, oh, okay. but, um, you know, I met J Mac. Um, I, I did the, um, you know, the whole, uh, combat control pipeline thing and, uh, made it through their, their, uh, pass tests and then through their, um, whatever, whatever they call, um, their, their version of hell week. I, I don't even know if they do that anymore. And, um, right. it just turns out I, I just really wasn't a strong swimmer. Yeah, and when they take a um, hundred and eighteen pound me and put a eighteen pound weight belt, <laughs> just one it wasn't working out, man. Right, so right. I met uh, I met J Mac, and um, he was like, "We would love to have you." Um, yeah. And so um, yeah, I found myself um, at Herbert Field not too long after that. Um, I think it was actually Fourth of July weekend. Which you remember back in the day, like the mods were crazy. I oh, mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, there was like you're off for the weekend. They, anyway, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, um, I did. I think I did pretty good at tech school. Um, you know, we had a good flight. Uh, there's some like serious leadership in that flight. Um, you know, MC Lane, who's a uh, combat control officer now. Um, we had. Um, Staff Sergeant Finn, who came from the Ranger Battalion, he was our team lead at the time. Um, you know, a couple of us uh, ended up at Bragg together eventually. Um, you know, I had Joel Glaze. You know, just okay. yeah. it was a good it was a good class. Like we all we all got along pretty well. Um, so we finished strong and uh, got my orders to uh, Fort Hood. So I was a little bummed, yeah. but. Um, I don't remember who, but one of the uh, guys was like, I love Texas. And I was like, dude, he's like, I don't even know anything about Colorado. We traded. And I went to Carson. And so how can they get, they give guys to do that because there's a, I've heard a lot of stories like already on this that, you know, yeah. people are like, you know, a guy wanted to be close to his family. So the guy swapped and it ended up taking him on a path that was phenomenal, you know? So yeah, it's really lucky. Yeah, I, mean, nothing, I mean, I'm not like, there's nothing wrong with Fort Hood. It just, it's probably, sure. it wasn't my speed um so i went to carson and luckily it was just surrounded by amazing people like uh nate holton steve colbert keith ingram bill pollock i mean oh man yeah heavy hitters Horniak, you know i mean um john barney god yeah. bless him you know yeah. it's great great airmen great ncos ben buffkin i mean it the list goes on and on and on and um i did my time um I, I was lucky to go to, um, 
you know, that's right when um, the special forces from our uh, 10th group came from Devons to Carson. So, um, and then we had the three, I don't even know, it was like a firmed up um, unit at the time, but you had, you had Steve Colbert, Keith Ingram, and Nate Holton supporting 10th group. Right. And so I kind of latched on to them and was like doing like DZSO kind of communication stuff and just helping out where I could with those guys. Um, you know, they were putting together like pretty realistic exercises for the, uh, for the ASOS. And it was just, just kind of watching it kind of turn a little bit. Um, and then um, I guess Colbert went to be uh, the chief of our career field here at the Pentagon. Oh, okay. And I got uh, a slot to airborne school, which, I mean, pretty lucky. And then I went to survival school, and then all of a sudden I found myself at Fort Bragg, um, which was which was pretty cool. Um, yeah. I, I got my cherry blast at Carson, but when I got to Bragg, I got Car- uh, Colbert wanted me to like experience, you know, the yeah. actual what goes down when you get your cherry blast. So actually, I did my cherry jump with Monica Schleck. Oh, really? No kidding. <laughs> yeah. So we both had our like cherry helmets on and. Oh, yeah. You, you got know, your blood wings from the from everybody there? Yeah. Well, Yeah. <laughs> that happened in my garage um, okay oh yeah that was probably like when we were starting to transition into not doing that you know like yeah. i was kind of frowned upon to do stuff like that but i, think I yeah. still have like metal somewhere <laughs> right <laughs> you know like one of the pins like snapped yeah, but, oh, yeah exactly <laughs> and then you're getting punched you know by guys like cole Thart and gannon and you know not right. not not small guys <laughs> right yeah <laughs> And then, um, and then, yeah. So, uh, off and running with the 82nd for you know a quick minute. Um, so we had some tremendous leadership there. It's just you know, like Valella and I are still really good, you know, friends. Actually, I mean, he's in Hawaii now, but I was honored that um, he spent one of his last days here in Virginia at our house, hanging out. So it's you know good to keep in contact with those guys, um, oh, sure. and then um, you know I mean we did I mean just did our thing. We had to like went to JRTC and NTC and did all that stuff. And then um, I was uh, kind of went through a little little bad spell. I went up to uh, uh, JSOC. It didn't work out for me, um, and uh, came back to the 14th. Okay, and then, um, Guys like Roger Cross and and V and and uh, you know like Benefield and, and all right, we're glad you're back. Oh, nice. Shortly thereafter, nine eleven happened, and um, I was kind of questioning what I wanted to do. I was actually at the MPF, um, looking at my options to to get out, and they had. Um, the twin towers kind of on, on the, uh, on the big screen, the first, the first airplane had already hit and the, um, and everybody's like, was this some kind of an accident? And, you know, you could hear it. And then the second one hit and I was like, holy shit. Um, Um, and I walked out and it, you know, it's, I can't remember the exact dates, but I reenlisted. Yeah. Um, and then uh, like guys like, I mean, I also had Buddy MacArthur, you know, like Randy Long, like all these legends, right? Yeah. Um, and um, Tim Stamey and Kevin Davis. And, and I mean, the list goes on. Yeah. Um, so many. Yeah. And, uh, and we all basically, you know, in different, different like tranches, but, you know, some, some left before others, but. Um, I remember like Stamey, Griff, Beef, um, Rock, Rick Weingartner. I, it, there is probably some people I'm missing. It. Shaq, um, Pete Donnelly. You know, they, we we were all moving out to Uzbekistan, yeah. and um, you know, I remember um, going to the 
uh, 18th ASOG headquarters and getting like the Intel brief and basically it was a not good, you know, story. They were just like, uh, you're getting orders that had no dates. Yeah. Like, and it was like, you're going, you're going to do something, but we don't have a whole lot of details on what you're going to be doing or where you're going or what you're, yeah, I mean, yeah, Desert, how long you're going to be there. Yeah. yeah was, I mean, Desert Storm was the last time we did anything. I think we kind of saw that one coming. Um, you know, we prepped for that. We did what we did. And, um, but this one, this one was uh, fast and furious. And uh, all of a sudden, the unit, you know, it, I think it, at the time, the 22nd had 21 dudes. And uh, at one point, um, we, the team room is just empty. Yeah. So everybody was like, Horn of Africa or, or, you know, Afghanistan or on, you know, we, people having babies. Like, it, it was just. Um, so there, there, there I was, um, in isolation with, uh, with fifth group. And so, um, yeah, like we went in, um, I can't, I mean, we went in to train 500 Afghanis to go into Anaconda. Right. And that, that, that was our team's mission at the time. Um. It was called um, uh, Safe House Stormy, which became uh, Salerno. Okay. So um, Chapman Airfield, um, and, you know, God bless him. I, I think everybody knows the story with Chapman. Um, yeah. Was just starting. And um, so that was kind of like where we landed. And then we, we, we took our um, Toyota you know, Tacomas, which... I currently own one (laughs) and uh, you've tested it out and you know, they work for sure. Yeah. uh, I remember, um, yeah, we drove from, um, post to, um, stormy safe house and, uh, we were met by 500 Afghanis basically. So that like, how was that? (laughs) A little rough, a little rough sleeping for a couple of weeks. But, um, (laughs) <laughs> I think to this day, it's, kind of, it's it's not actually funny if you ask my wife, but um, I think I sleep in four hour increments to this day, just from the years of of doing the shift work. You know, I mean, somebody oh, yeah. you, you gotta have somebody on the roof, somebody's gotta be awake, the other guys sleep, the other guys, and I, I still think to this day, um, <laughs> I think it's because of all those years, but um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, yeah, so we, um, it was interesting. So um, I haven't been a part of that kind of training, but I mean, you know, these guys are teaching them how to shoot, how to cook their own food, how to, manu- you know, logistics, like movements. I mean, we're talking like taking a 12 year old and teaching them how to like move, shoot, and communicate. Right. Over a course of, I mean, I, I, I want to say it took forever, but I think it was like three weeks. And then all of a sudden, a lot of time. I mean, you, it, it, it was, was you guys were moving fast. Yeah, I mean, we, didn't, you know, we knew it was coming, and we kind of knew where the strongholds were at. Um, and obviously, it was very fluid. And I wasn't dialed into all the the briefings because I was just a dumb Air Force guy. But um, we were um, we were a blocking position during Anaconda. So I wasn't near um, a lot of the heavy crap that the 10th mountain guys saw and the, and all the tiered guys, obviously, you know, we can go into details, but there's books, medals, honor, whole nine yards. Um, but so we were, we were a blocking position. And at this point I, I failed to mention, but um, I deployed over there without, Body armor, <laughs> dude. Uh, you don't. You. I don't know how many times I've heard that story. Like it's crazy. It really is crazy that they would send people without armor. I mean, it's, 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 yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, they were, I mean, we didn't have it. I think the twenty second. Um, now, God bless the seventeenth STS, but I think we were the only ones that actually had M fours. Everybody else had like a Gal five, <laughs> probably. <laughs> you know, I mean. Yeah. It, it's just a whole different time. Like 
I had a Kevlar on. They all Mitch helmets. I had a flak vest. They had like, yeah. anyway, they caught me up. But um, and and I remember going um, shopping with Randy Long to Herman's World of Sports or something. Right. Um, winter weather gear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there, there was probably a few other people with us, but I, you know, I just I kind of some of that stuff I just don't remember. But um, yeah, yeah. So during Anaconda, I mean, we were high up, like no joke. It was cold as shit. <laughs> and we were even including the uh, SF team I was with, like we were just like, holy crap, man. Like they had the, the I, f- I think it was called Spears gear. Yeah. It was like under pajamas and a, a layering yeah, layered system. system. Yeah. It's still, I mean, we were like, holy crap. Yeah. Um, and I remember um, humping up a rucksack that um, I honestly don't think I could carry it right now. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, was, I just got up there. I was like, God, you know, I hope this works out, you know. Um, and, you know, it did. It, it, it was I, I want to say we packed enough food for like five days, maybe something like that. And I think we were up there for like two and a half weeks oh my god uh might even been longer than that um but like i said i'm not that was easy compared to what some of the guys went through like scrappy and you know oh yeah some of the other tag peas that i know that were in some pretty awful you know yep awful stuff so we came back um I'm not a hundred percent sure why, but I, uh, I, I kind of raised my hand to stay and then I fell onto, um, a B team Okay. that was actually at Chapman, um, host airfield for those of you who don't know it. And then, uh, Mike Colthart, another legend, um, yeah. his A team went to our old safe house. Oh, okay. And so, um, it was good to see Mike. Um, I hadn't seen him. I hadn't seen many people in a, you know, many tech P types, but, um, in a while, but, you know, certainly sur- surrounded by combat controllers and, um, different tiered unit guys. So, you know, it wasn't like I was alone. Um, but right. it was, uh, yeah, it was good. It was good to see Mike. And then, um, I got the call from, I think Tim Stamey was the, uh, NCOIC at the time. I, I could be wrong. It might have been Hal Sullivan. I, I can't remember if they swapped, but um, they were like, yeah, it's time to come home. And um, I remember going through um, Kuwait and uh, and Valella and Longoria and a handful of others were kind of in charge there. Um, I had hair down to here. Um, <laughs> I can't grow a beard like you, but um, <laughs> I could grow this like general custard looking thing. Right. And uh, I went to Kuwait. I had my military ID on and I'm walking to the PX and I'm just like, I want some combos and Gatorade. That's all I'm asking for. Right. And uh, all, I mean, I couldn't go two feet without, without somebody being like, you need a haircut, you know? And I was like, yeah. it's like, Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think we had our like loose grit, you know, grooming standards at the time. I, I, I don't know, but I well, know, it so. was real loose back then. I mean, at the very beginning, it was, it was yeah. kind of like do whatever you want until somebody really put the hammer down. But I mean, not too many people were though, because they knew what kind of stuff you guys were doing, you know? I mean, it was kind of necessary to be, you didn't really want to be as, you know, identifiable as maybe some others. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also the fact that I mean, you we had the means to do it. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I remember, <laughs> I remember at Chapman, um, we call it, we literally call it the torture chamber because, um, we were showering with water. You were kind of heating up yourself, but it was, um, all you got was like a five gallon bucket. Yeah. Because uh, they, they, we just didn't have the uh, the potable water to do it, and then right. there was a creek running through it. But 
I mean, that's where everybody upstream went to the bathroom in the morning, so you didn't even hear that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I remember I go, I go like a week at a time. Um, but yeah, you know, yeah, hey, good times. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that was very austere at the very beginning for sure. I remember, um, you know, we talked uh, months ago, I think, about doing this, and yeah, I got kind of cold feet because. I didn't really like know what to say, so I got like all these notes on post-its. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we get back and you know everybody's helping everybody. Um, now we're in this rotation thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the money is flowing. Like we're getting whatever we need. Like guys are going out like full like. Yeah, you know, we're getting like arcteric jackets and smart wool and boots yeah. and any optic you wanted and right. the best of everything. And um, it was kind of really that point where I saw our career field. I was like, okay, here we are, yeah. you know. Um, so, you know, you do your like first rotation, your second, your third, your whatever. Um, I think I did three Afghanistan rotations and one Iraq rotation before I, um, I got out. It could be, it was either like two Afghanistans plus my extra time, but I know I did some time there and then we did the invasion of Iraq. Yeah. And so all the Afghanistan stuff was still going on. And then he had all the Horn of Africa stuff, which was, a mess so we had you know we had like people sitting there um kind of on ready watch but the um you know when when we got on the plane so we went to campbell his fifth group again um and now we all knew each other you know what i mean yeah. like the whole plane was just full of like bro slaps and bro hugs and like how are you doing man you know yeah. i ended up getting on a team um and our job was, um, and this is where um, I think I was telling you about uh, with Quisenberry, um, our team's job was to uh, secure the Karbala Gap, which was this choke point that um, Intel had decided that maybe it was going to be a chem situation. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was right by the dam. And then the city of Karbala was only a few miles up the road. So, yeah, so we went in, flew into Jordan, got in our Humvees, drove through, I don't know how many minefields. Um, it, it was just it, full, full mop gear. Um, of course, I'm the TAC-P, so I'm in the back seat. And, um, yeah, we got to this hide site, and this is where um, – I guess we were there for maybe a handful of days and then um, it might have been that night. I can't remember, but shock and all started. Um, I could kind of hear things and see things, but I like put my night vision, well, monocular because we were still poor at the time. All right. In the further field. <laughs> so I put it on and I looked up and all I saw was like triple A and flashes of what I can only assume are like tomahawks just going like, yeah. I mean, it was nuts. We woke up the next day. Um, you know, we are so far behind lines that um, I don't even know. I, I think maybe the uh, conventional forces had started over the border at that point, yeah. but we were, I mean, I remember uh, Pete Klein, he was like, dude, you guys were this little green dot. And there was like nothing around, oh my God. but turns out like Q and those guys were just a little bit ahead of us kind of securing yeah. the dam because they, you know, I'm not going to tell them that mission, but I, we could only assume that they were going to try to blow that and, you know, wipe out the water supply and all that stuff. But, um, so that went on for, uh, a while, <laughs> like, um, there were some like SAM launches. I caught some airstrikes in on them. Um, and then we got the call to come back. 
And this is after that dust storm. I don't know if everybody was tracking on that, but there is zero visibility. Like yeah. we were tying um, 550 cord to the vehicles to go pee because you couldn't see. You couldn't see That's anything. Crazy. And um, we went, we got, you know, eventually it all kind of settled the dust literally. And uh, we tried to start the vehicles. They're all dead. Every single one of them. So one of our um, echoes, and this is some green beret shit, because I've never seen anything like this. He right. series a bunch of, um, of batteries together to charge one of the Humvees. And then we, we used the um, charger to fire all the other ones up. And then we started to part. What kind of batteries was he using? Like, uh, like oh, 590s yeah, or? Yeah, yeah, the ones that went in like our radios. Oh, okay. So it <laughs> was a um, lithium battery. Okay. <laughs> so That's it was awesome. A, it was a decision, a big decision, because I had to take the batteries out of my radio, which meant I could no longer talk to airplanes. Right. Um, but once we got everything fired up, you know, we could, we had the internal comms in the actual um, Humvee. So then I got hooked up into all that. So, so we were good at that point. And so, um, probably one of the scariest things, um, I've ever done was the passage of lines. So we're going back to friendly forces who are coming towards us with M1s, Bradleys, you name it. And they're, they are beelining to go fight. Um, and so we had to do all the signaling stuff and talk and, you know, that was a lot of SF stuff that I'd never seen before. Um, but when we, we passed through the lines and we got to the talk, you know, I saw, um, saw some friendly faces, uh, from Fort Drum, um, heard a story about, um, some Apaches that were targeting us and, uh, the NCOIC, who I don't remember his name, and I'm, I'm sorry about that, basically was like, no, that's that's a friendly unit. Wow. Um, so, yeah, we got close a bunch of times. Um, and uh, anyway, so so we get back, and then um, then we go to um, Karbala University. So we, we decided that's where we were going to set up shop, basically. Okay. So back to the same thing. You know, it was all Americans at the time, um, and we, you know, it was just like security. But at this point, um, things in Iraq started to free up for the different sects that weren't normally allowed to do things. And um, I remember we had this demonstration that went down our street, um, oh, like 100,000 people or something. I mean, I. Nothing happened, but God bless, we were all just like, holy crap. And so that that was my, um, and then uh, Pete Klein called and said, hey, man, come home. And so uh, they drove me and then I went home. Was it just your time to come home? There wasn't like an emergency or anything? or No, no, it was just. Um, You'd been there I long think, enough and somebody else's turn. I think we saw the writing on the wall um, that um, this, the rotations that the Army was doing versus what we were such a small unit at the time, three to four months was, you got to come back, you know, you can't sit there for a full year. Like people, God bless them, you know, what they were doing just a handful of years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so came back, um, did another tour um, in Afghanistan. And I was a, um, at the uh, Siege of Soda Fires cell. So, you know, kind of, supporting the guys that were you know troops in contact and things like that right um unfortunately um we lost a guy and uh he needed to be backfilled so um kirk newman and i went to um I, it was called gecko at the time yeah. and uh and we just fell down on on two 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 more odas mine was a guard unit out in maryland which is cool because that's where i'm from so we <laughs> Like we all talked about like skate Haven and all kinds of places that we used to go to as kids and stuff. So, um, most of those guys, and I think with exception of maybe one or two hadn't, hadn't really seen anything yet. 
And so um, I remember telling the team lead, I was like, I'm going to tell you, man, I'm a little bit of a mortar magnet. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened. Um, we got into uh, De Chopin, and there was a handful of ODAs, and um, all hell broke loose. Um, they blew, like, boulders into the roads, and, like, you know, bullets were flying. There was just, like, dust, like, kicking up all around us. And uh, so I, I just unloaded. Um, I saw some, some flashes, and um, it was kind of like, at that point, I don't know if any of many of those guys have pulled a trigger yet. And um, so I, I started unloading up into the hillside and then all of a sudden everybody looked around and was like, bum, 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 bum. you know, 50 cows at two, you know, the grenade launchers going off. Everybody's like, you know, everybody's getting. And, and so that lasted for a little bit. Um, the lead ODA had a JTAC with them. He was a guard guy and I only met him once, but I mean, God bless this guy. He was kind of in control at the time, and I was talking to him. You know, I was like, "If you need help, let me know." Uh, but he's fully qual- qualified ETAC, and he was crushing it. Um, it seemed to die down for a little bit. They uh, retrograded. Um, we had a couple injuries, um, but um, to my knowledge, I don't think anybody was was killed yet. And then, um, so they left, kind of pulled back. And then we went in, and that's when we found out um, a lot of our Afghan forces were kind of caught in an orchard. So I had a, um, a four ship of Apaches come in and um, just meleeed the place. Oh, okay. um, and then we went in and got, we got who we could out and then uh, drew back. And then um, we kind of all like huddled, you know, we were out of the valley at that point. So. Yeah. You know, we, we were back to our uh, superior position. Um, this is how I think of it. I mean, so people with way better memories will tell me something different. But <laughs> I just remember we got back to the, like, medium ground. We weren't at the high ground, but we weren't in the valley anymore. Um, and then um, Kirk's, Kirk Newman's team showed up. And... Uh, I don't know how many hours it was between when I woke up and when I went to sleep, but at that point I felt safe and I fell asleep. Um, I remember Kurt, they went down and drove through kind of, they were now like trying to figure out like what happened. Um, And he said there was like, like four inches of brass just all over the road. Um, From when you guys were there. Yeah, I mean, we Winchester, we were real low on it, like low, low. Like we had 30 rounds, kind of low. So, yeah, I think that's kind of when I decided it might be something, you know, sometimes I think about something different to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I came home shortly thereafter and uh, put my paperwork in and headed back to D.C. and uh, landed in a really small, good company. Um, we were making a uh, signal intelligence tools and it was a good mix of engineers and operators. And, you know, these guys were like, well, we need to do this. And, um, I was like, well, yeah, but you can't carry it cause it's too big. So, um, you know, it, it was just a good thing. And, um, I was there for, I guess, close to seven years. And then, um, I, made a made a transition into the uh, intelligence community and got back into uh, doing stuff. <laughs> so um, at this point, I'm married. You know, if you're on Facebook, you see my wife. I don't know how I did it. But <laughs> <laughs> it uh, We're all lucky <laughs> men, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm blessed. And then um, so I did that for a few years. And then... Um, you know, we had had a kid, and um, I still still at the building. Missed um, missed my daughter, talking, crawling, walking, all this you know kind of stuff. I was downrange, and uh, I mean, I wasn't in harm's way like like before. Yeah, but still, you're, you're you're still there. You're still in a twelve hour time difference or whatever it is. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, I spent, um, I guess if you add up all the time, I was probably there for close to seven years. And then, um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So, nice. um, uh, yeah. So uh, now that you're done, you're, you've kind of transitioned out of like all that stuff. Like what's next on the horizon? Do you have any like initiatives or do you have any, any things that you're uh, working on or any kind of things that you are passionate about, you know, anything like that? Um, yeah. So actually I, um, unfortunately had a, um, friend of mine, all my high school friends as well, uh, pass away, um, just recently, which just reconnected a lot of us. And, um, I'm not going to get into details about what happened, but it, he was going through some stuff. Okay. Um, no military background or anything like that. And um, I got reconnected with a few brothers that um, kind of turns out everybody's dealing with stuff, right? Yeah. And so it doesn't matter if you were getting shot at or if, you know, you lost a parent or whatever. You're just, everybody's got things going on. And um, so we're kind of starting up this uh, brotherhood network. Um, and it's a lot of former military guys, but there's also an equal amount of just guys going through stuff. Like I'm talking okay. about like failed marriages or things just don't work out like they thought kind of deal. So I'm kind of passionate. Yeah. I mean, and, and a lot of times, like when I got out, um, I think it was like maybe a year and a half to two, might even be a little longer. That's when the dust kind of just settled. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I was, you know, just doing what single guys in Vir Northern Virginia do, like going out and probably drinking too much and chasing women around and doing all that. And, um, but that's what I would say to the, to the, you know, the, the folks that listen to this. And I know that, um, Tommy Case and I just had a recent conversation where, uh, we need to do more than just like repost some dumb shit on Facebook. Yeah. Um, people need to, to talk. We need to meet up. We need to hug, say, I love you. You know, all this stuff. I have no idea what somebody else is. I had the, the fortunate pleasure of having a super strong network when I came home. Like my mom, my dad, my sister, my parents were together. They were, we were upper middle class. We had everything like, but some people don't. And, um, and I think that's where I feel like, um, I feel like I could do more there. You know, once this network is formed, cause right now we're in the like farming, storming, norming kind of phase. Right. However, those words, yeah. <laughs> work, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, but as soon as I do, you know, I'll, I'll make sure that I, I, I put it out there so people know that they can, um, you're not alone. You know what I mean? Right. No matter what, it doesn't have to be a bullet being shot at you. It could be anything. So, yeah, sometimes it just takes someone to reach out, and just with that one little connection can, you know, may, make all the difference. You know, I mean, some people just they go through and they're they they're up against it, and they they get really overwhelmed. And sometimes it just takes another guy to be like, no, no, it's it's cool, man. I'm I'm dealing with some stuff too, and they're like, oh, okay, I'm not I'm not alone. I there are other people out there that are yeah. um, struggling as well. I mean, the guy that um, has, like, probably helped me out more than anybody has never been in the military. Yeah. And, uh, but he is, like, this spiritual, he just has good advice. I don't, I don't know how to put it any other way, but, you know, some of this stuff, you know, you, you, you got to think of a, you got to think of a time and a place where you're, you're most happy. And, and when you're not feeling that way, you can think about it. You can, you know, kind of go through those motions and, um you know, stuff I would have never thought of. <laughs> well, that's a good point. And sometimes it takes a guy like that, you know, we're all, we're surrounded by military guys or, or, you know, OGA guys or whatever, but sometimes it takes a different perspective to kind of open us up to other things. You know, there's, you know, there where we kind of get kind of myopic or like hyper-focused on this one way. And it just takes a guy who hasn't, hasn't done anything we've done to kind of open our eyes to, to new I don't know, options, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's all, you know, I mean, you've, you've heard it. Um, the whole sheepdog thing and, and yeah, you can't run around like that all the time. No. Anybody that thinks that they're at some point, 
you know, sometimes you got to take a nap. Sure. So, um, and I think, I think all of us run pretty hot to begin with, or we wouldn't have been doing what we did, but, um, well, yeah, man. And then, um, the other thing I would say is, uh, in, in the free time, just do things, man, get your certificates, get your, you know, it could be anything, man. Like yeah. just make yourself marketable. I know, I mean, I don't know about you, but I felt like when I got out, I was like, well, what am I going to do? You know, like I, yeah. I've been going in airstrikes and running with rucks around Pope airfield for <laughs> the last eight right. years. But I think we offer, you know, as a career field, and I'm assuming a lot of um, career field people are going to see this. Um, I think we got a lot to offer. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, for sure. You know, yeah, the there's dry- a tech, Tommy, speaking to Tommy, he, he and Romero Villalobos, you know, they formulated that special warfare taps program. You know, that's, that's some guys can reach out to that. And it's very, you know, focused on what we've done and how to translate what we've done in the military to kind of civilian life. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's a job posting board. I mean, I, I follow it. Um, yeah. You know, for me, um, I think just being like, I mean, if we're friends on Facebook, you're, you obviously know I coach my kids soccer. I've got a, a nine, you know, and a seven year old. And, uh, and for me, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, sure. Kind of been um, thinking about, um, I didn't retire, so um, I don't. I don't have that to lean back on. But um, you know, just kind of for me, just kind of thinking about um, some other ways, like rentals, and you know, for sure. that kind of thing. To maybe, maybe five years from now, I'm just I don't know, hanging out. Yeah, yeah. There are options. Like you don't have to work for a defense company. You can work. You can do anything you want. You can, like you said, invest in real estate or you know, work at a civilian company. I mean, they're like, I know there are a couple of guys that, you know, once they're, once they transitioned or once they modified that resume to reflect kind of civilian type stuff, you know, people were, you know, scooping them up uh, as fast as they could. Um, a lot of guys see, understand that a military dude just has that base um, kind of discipline, that base drive to, you know, do things uh, correctly, I guess, or they're a little more motivated, I guess, sometimes, not all the time, but, you know, they, they know they're getting, they know they're getting like that baseline kind of, uh, at least the baseline motivation to, to do well. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, you hit the nail, you know, I mean, it's super motivated. I can't even, I was joking with my wife this morning. I don't even think I would make it to our tech school right now. <laughs> I mean, are you talking about because it got a lot harder or it's like, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, there, uh, we, I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. Yeah, you're right, man. They they are really making some studs in there. Like I know we, you know, it was tough and we had to run and it was it wasn't easy by any means, but you know, I was 17, so it was like and I just got done I got out of high school wrestling and went right into tech school, so I felt like it was yeah, pretty yeah. good. But, but um yeah, yeah, I mean it's right now they're they're making some studs out of out of that tech school for sure. 17 guys. They're oh, they're animals, yeah. machines. Yeah. I I kind of like um it's funny because, you know, the 22nd is no longer. I left. Um, I'm actually staring. It's down here, but you can't see it. I um, I left right when it turned over to the 17th. Okay. Like maybe a month, maybe a month or two. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But um, God bless, man. I see like you YouTube that stuff. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's so good to see. So oh, proud of you guys. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good to see that it's growing. It didn't show any signs of stopping either. It seems like they're just keep keep getting better and better, which is the way it should be. You know, I was talking to Matt, uh, Matt Schleich and and Brandy about this, and more like, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be that way. You know, it be it would be horrible if they were like going backwards from where we were. But yeah, they're just yeah. growing exponentially every every year. They're getting better. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's awesome, man. Hats yeah. off to those guys for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to make it um, down there at some point. Um, we had COVID for the last reunion, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to make it down there as well. That'd be cool to see. And that place, since I've been there, has changed so much that, I mean, I can't even imagine what it looks like right now. So, yep. Cool, man. Cool, brother. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. That was uh, uh, 
like I said, I, I, the 22nd, I know all those guys, you know, and I know how great they are and I've interacted with them in different ways, but, uh, it's always cool to hear kind of how the inner workings of it. Cause, uh, it, the rest of us were kind of clueless about how it worked. I mean, we didn't really know, you know, what you guys did there and it's, and I, I, one thing that was always amazing was you're su always super busy. Like you guys were always doing, like you said, that the team room was usually empty or there was like a handful of maybe a couple of guys there, but yeah, I always had a lot of respect for everybody that worked at the 22nd. I thought that was a great unit. Yeah, I mean, that was a super good time, man. Anyway. All right, brother. I appreciate it. Grateful dad. Nice. Pearl Jam. That's where I'm at in life now. <laughs> oh, is that the one to the right is Pearl Jam? Yeah, Eddie okay, Vedder. Nice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. 1992, Seattle. Nice. So, anyway, JD was amazing thank you so much bud my pleasure man I, I thanks for coming on i can't thank you enough all right brother all right, all right i'll talk to you later all right man later